the way, I was just going to tell y'all that Pavel Satuline, who is a exercise physiologist, he actually recommends talking and walking. It's more beneficial and more healthy. It, ma it makes the walking more beneficial and more healthy. Um, so I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, he, he was the guy, I'm, I'm a kettlebell enthusiast, and I know some of y'all have seen that. But uh, he, he wrote a book called Enter the Kettlebell. He, he was the guy that po uh, made uh, American kettlebells popular. Um, but I'll, I, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll incorporate something about him into this. Hey, comrades. So the RKC Weekend Workshop would not be complete without the power. Hey comrades, so the RKC Weekend Workshop would not be complete without the Power by Pavel. And right here I have Pavel standing next to me. How do you feel this weekend? Oh, excellent, comrade Amanda. So Pavel, what does it take to be a comrade? Right, I'll tell you a Russian joke. The guy's fishing, and he picks out a fish. Another guy comes by, a Russian of course. He says, oh, you're fishing. What are you going to do with the fish? I'm going to eat it. Oh, you evil man. So you're going to leave the young fish orphans without their parents. So bam, knocks him out. Next day he comes back, the fisherman's back at it, with a black eye. He says, oh, you're fishing again. Just catch and release, catch and release. He says, oh, they're not good enough for you. So, <laughs> so this is how it is at this course. On one hand, we expect perfection uh, in the technique and the skill and safety. On the other hand, we expect you to be tough. So safety and performance are not at odds. That's what people don't understand. So the same techniques that we use to protect your shoulders or your back or your knees are the same techniques that make you stronger. We had probably one quarter of the class set PR personal record in their military press, and that's uh, in the end of the second day of training. We're teaching you how to spread the load throughout your body, because when you get hurt, that's when something, there's a weak link that tears. And by spreading the load evenly, you become resilient and you become strong. Now you're a chief instructor, but these weekend workshops are really a learning process. Is there anything you learned this weekend that you didn't know before? I learn every time. I learn every time. I take extensive notes every time. I have a great team. Uh, who contributes to this program and uh, we constantly evolve. We teach the same exercises, we teach the same principles, they don't change, but tactically we change constantly. We constantly get better, uh, sharpen the blade, try to get the same thing done better, faster, pack more to this weekend. So if someone wants to get into kettlebells and they're, they don't know anything about it, they're starting from the beginning, what's the best DVD or book for them to get? EnterTheKettlebell.com has what you need. EnterTheKettlebell.com, that's the kettlebell starter kit for Comrades, ladies, comrades, gentlemen, and ideally find yourself a certified RKC instructor on dragondoor.com. You know, life kind of, you know, I don't want to say life's returning to normal. I mean, because normal would be cis is here, but normal without cis. Um, you know, you're just kind of, uh, I was talking to my wife about it. She goes, God, I miss her. I, you know, I like, Every time, because my wife has this like extensive jewelry collection, and uh, you know my sister, um, they had five kids, and so the whole marriage and everything else, she went without, right? And uh, you know, and uh, I mean. I don't know. Maybe that's what led to their downfall. But so I, I've been, so the last 10 of those years, she knew, um, she, she knew Rocky and Trish being married together. And, um, we called him Rocky. Um, and, uh, then she knew her divorce and they really became good friends after their divorce. And it's not like it was an ugly divorce. They actually were kind of remained friends. They were like irritated with each other, but he was actually really helpful to my sister when she was going through that cancer. I mean, she, she, she picked her up and helped her uh, to go see like school functions. And it was nice to see that. But getting back to this, my sister or, or my wife, she has this jewelry 
and you know my, knowing that my sister did without a lot did did without i mean because her her husband ex-husband was an lvn and her and she and after you know she didn't she didn't work because she raised all these kids uh she worked a little bit well then she went to work you know when the kids got older uh in in the in the school system um so a lot you know and she her, her and my wife became just the best of friends in the last 10 years and uh she told everyone how much she loved my wife and how much she appreciated her and it was nice having someone that was so down to earth and sane she'd have to be down to earth and say to be married to me <laughs> number three for me but um So she would uh, go through her jewelry box and she would give, uh, she would give uh, like my sister jewelry and it just made her day. And she would like, and my, my wife has this like extensive, like, I don't know, one of the brands that she had was these coach purses and she had a bunch of them and she goes, well, I just don't use these. And so she would just give them. Oh, I see what Marley's saying. She's, she's looking at little road runners down there. There's some road runners walking around. Like, Come on, Marley, you don't need to, you're not going to get those. So she would just give my wife different stuff. And so, um, and she would, and so today she was going through her jewelry and she goes, oh my God, she just started crying. She had off today. My wife did. And she goes, Paul, I just wanted to cry. I wanted to call your sister and talk to her about the jewelry. And I just realized that I can't call her. And I go, well, I haven't really had like that too much yet. I mean, I still, I want to talk to her. But it hasn't like really hit me like that where she was like crying and all wet eyed and all that stuff. Um, but... You know, so so the last uh, birthday that I celebrated with my sisters, uh, like her birthday's April 30th, I think. Is when I got, I'm bad at birthdays. But we bought her. It's the last day of April. Is that the 30th? Um, so kind of knowing her predicament, and she just lost her hair. She still looked good, but she, and she had this really nice wig on. I'll post a picture of it. Um, and, and so we went out and bought her some, I mean, just this whole James Avery set. I mean, it, it, it was, uh, I mean, it was a pretty, uh, costly, uh, present for, for, you know, your sister. I mean, you know, if you're right, uh, you know, uh, I mean, she wasn't expecting that, but she just loved it, man. And we gave it to her. I've given her good presents to, I mean, like I used to give her like gift cards all the time and she was, are you serious? Like, yeah. You know, I got it to give and, uh, you know, and, and, and I, I couldn't think of a better person, um, to, to give a good Christmas or birthday present to than my sister. I mean, cause she is just absolutely the most phenomenal person. And, uh, you know, I, I just, like, my dad's passed, and I was kind of angry with him for the first year he passed, you know? And not my sister, man. Not my sister, because we just got along beautifully. I, we were the two youngest, and uh, not that our parents were abusive, but um, it's just like that they weren't expecting us, you know? And... and and, uh, I don't know, maybe they just got tired out with the older two and cause they, they have a far better relationship with my mom. My mom never calls me to help her. She always gets my brother too. Um, so, you know, it's just going to be challenging. I mean, cause you know, as far as like my close family, um, I mean, I still have close family. Like I have my brother and stuff, but 
it'll never be what it was with my sister. It, it, it won't be. And, and I, I imagine that's pretty much the case with every family. Um, so, I mean, I really love my sister, man. And uh, I tell you, man, I don't, I don't know if I've said this, but it was hard to talk to her. When she wanted to talk about dying, God, I was like, I, I, I don't know how I could talk. Because, you know, I wanted to cry. And I, I couldn't cry and maintain, you know, just a wet face. I mean, I, I, I would lose it. I would just start crying out loud. Because I'm, I'm, I, if I have emotions, it's, it's like they're not contained especially crying, man. And that's just how I am. I, I, it's hard for me to cry, but anyhow, but when I do, it's hard for me to contain, um, for the most part. All right, here, I'll just stop.